about it now because, you know, she was very stylish, very nice girl. But, you know, we were 14 and we were really jealous of Jane Asher before Linda. And uh, I remember, remember I, I brought it up in my book that uh, we heard he was getting engaged to her. And me and my two girlfriends, at, we were going to lunch at, at school and the cafeteria. And we decided, it was, it was right after help came out. So we were decided that we were going to have a sacrifice. And we got a clay figure that we made that looked like Jane Asher. And we actually stuck pins in it like a voodoo doll during lunch to get, to get rid of Jane. And uh, now that I think back of it, I'm so glad the nuns didn't see that because we probably would have been brought down to the principal's office immediately yeah. <laughs> but yeah we were jealous and is it, uh, we is it wanted safe to, to get say that Jane. is it safe to say that paul's your favorite beetle yes yeah. since actually since february 9th 1964 <laughs> ed sullivan that was the night i picked out paul mccartney and i've been he's been my boy since then <laughs> and he's the one that you and the hair of yeah <laughs> No, actually, just going. I, there's one thing I wanted to ask you. After you showed all that swag from uh, from Victor, what kind yeah. of work, what work did you do? What what was involved in 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 working in uh, being the organizing the fan club and doing all the like? What did you have to do? Okay, I did not have a, me and my girlfriends did not have a really big fan club. Not it was nothing like what Pat Mancusa had, where she had thousands of people. We had like 50 or 70. Mm -hmm. We actually, all we did basically was get 25 cents from each girl, gave them a membership card. And every month we would have a mimeograph newsletter, which was probably two pages. And we would get some of that news. It was as purple mimeograph papers. We, and we give them out at school to because that's who was our membership was our school, the school girls in high school. So, um, the information came from what Victor sent us while he was, you know, out on a location for, for help or somewhere else. Uh, it was information that we got from other uh, Victor Spinetti fan clubs about what he's doing, his background. Uh, it was very, very simple. And uh, well, the one fun <laughs> thing we did, though, which is also in the book, is that uh, when help finally was released and it was in the summer the girls uh, the, my three girlfriends and I decided <laughs> we would go to um the tower theater where it was being shown in the suburbs and we would try to get some membership uh that way for new members of the club so at that time <clears throat> very interesting I didn't tell you this Victor had actually sent us the sweater he wore in a hard day's night, the V-neck gray sweater. And it was like a mohair, it was wool. <laughs> so the funny thing is, is that my girlfriend, Diane, who was, we were co-presidents, her and I, she wore it to the theater, outside the theater. We had little pieces of paper saying, join the Victor Spinetti fan club. We put a little piece of fuzz from the sweater with scotch tape on each each little card that we we made and we put our phone numbers and uh we and she wore this big fuzzy sweater because everybody had seen a hard day's night who was in line waiting to see help and we got some memberships for the club but oh my gosh it was so hot for her to wear that sweater that day and uh but yeah that's that's how we ran the fan club it was by this <laughs> By the, by the seat of our pants, I guess, you know, but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, wow. You, you have done a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I have to ask you, did you see Wings in 76? Nope. I did not because in 75... I moved to Stockholm, Sweden to go to graduate school. And I stayed in Europe for 24 years. Oh, so wow. I, I never saw wings. I saw 
McCartney in Helsinki and somewhere else, uh, but I never saw Wings. Uh, I missed that whole part. And, and also, it got to be that after I graduated college and then I was working as a journalist, uh, and I wrote about the Beatles while I was working as a journalist. You know that. It's on the cover of my book. Um, they took a picture. The, the, it, it's, it was an article I did about 10 years after Beatlemania. But after that, and I moved for grad school, you know, the Beatles, they were always in my heart. But I really went on with my life, you know. So I wasn't as crazy as I was when I was younger. Uh, you know, I, I went to grad school. I settled in Stockholm, and then I I settled in and went back to Philly for a very short period of time. Then I I went to Helsinki for twelve years in Finland. I got married. I had kids. So that part of my life was not really going to concerts much at all. Um, I still love them, but in you know in a different way. It it kind of got pushed to the side a bit, you know, as I went on my life, my adult life. That's where I am right now. I have a little, I have a little son named Julian and I'm just waiting for him to be the right age where I can start taking him to, to shows. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the thing. But and I'm, I'm, and I'm passively family. aggressive, passively aggressively teaching him the Beatles. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's important to, to put it down to the next generation. And, you know, even though my girls are not great Beatle fans, they're fans. Yeah. They'll see Paul again. Uh, they went three years ago. Uh, they went, you know, six years. I mean, every time he comes by or we saw him in Helsinki and stuff, uh, I, I did make sure that when I took the girls to school or I wherever, I would always have Beatle tapes or Beatle CDs uh, in the car. They they learned it all through me, you know, and uh it's just a part of my life still. Um, now that I'm older, I kind of reverted back to my younger years. Then <laughs> I don't know if you call that senility or what, but you know, I, I, uh, I'm more of a fan now again because I had the time, uh, which is great, you know. You've instilled the appreciation of the Beatles to them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to do that, you know, yeah. and you see, I mean, I don't know. Uh, when you go to the Fest for Beatle fans, you see three generations there sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, little babies wearing, you know, Beatle shirts. And it's, it's really cool because uh, the Beatles will live forever. You know, it, it's, it's being handed down from one generation to the next. And the music is, is you know, it's, it's evergreen. It, it never goes out of style, which is fantastic you it's know yep. <laughs> it is timeless yeah it's true it's timeless you know um now i have to ask you i know you said in email that this was going to be impossible for you to answer but <laughs> what is your favorite beatles album oh geez oh my if i mean I like the earlier albums uh, a lot because they have such, I don't know, they mean so much to me because I, I was a really new kind of Beatle fan in those days. Uh, so things like Hard Day's Night, I really like. I love Help. Uh, God, I, I mean, I could go through them all. Of course, I like Magical Mystery Tour and, oh, Lord, I mean, the White Album. They're all great albums. I, I I just can't pick one over the other, but I could say that I still did like a lot of the earlier stuff a little better than the later stuff, just because of when I came on board with Beatlemania, you know, and and how we listened to it over and over and over again. No, you know? liking liking those older tunes, like the old rock yeah. and roll and the She Loves You, I Love You, you know, P.S. I Love You, all that stuff. And then them transitioning into the more experimental. How would, how did you accept, did you accept that? Were you kind of put off by it? You know, I, I was, when I was getting into college in 67 and they, they did, uh, they did the, uh, mag I guess it was Magical Mystery Tour. Um, I I just felt like it wasn't my kind of, psychedelia wasn't my kind of thing. 
And I, I wasn't surprised that they were going that way, but it, it sure wasn't something that I was, you know, I thought was going to happen right there and then. Um, I accepted it and I got to like it, but it took me a little time because I was so used to, you know, the early and the transitional Beatles. Uh, and I was fine with it, but uh, I really wasn't, I never was into the drug culture or the real hippie, hippie culture. Uh, so it was something different for me because um, not all, believe it or not, not all Beatle maniacs turned out to be hippies. You know, some of us went to college and, you know, wore button down shirts and whatever, you know, it was, it was, there was as many Beatle maniacs out there as there's different personalities, but a lot of people think, oh, well, she was a Beatle fan. And when the, you know, the hippie thing came oh, I'm sure, you know, she was a, a hippie with that. No, it didn't work that way. We were all different types of people doing different types of things. Some of us, some of us never touched drugs like me. And some of them, you know, were went along with the Beatles and what they did. So um, it was an interesting time. And as I keep telling you, very different from today. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I know, 50 years ago. I'm at well, 60 at this point, but yeah. you would, I mean, that you would be on social media. Oh, would, would, you be, would, you, would you would you be like, yeah, right? Social media to us, we had no idea what it was. And, you know, even when computers came out, you know, when I was younger, I thought, well, the only thing I can do do with it is, you know, word for my, my businesses, you know, and, 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 and type on it and stuff. We had no idea, had no idea that the world was going to go this way. And it's, it's been a, a, it's great that you can, you know, it's so, I get so excited is I could just turn on my phone and I can watch live Beatles, you know, different concerts and stuff. I mean, I would have died for that when I was like, you know, 15 or 16, you know, I really would have. Because the we had to just listen to the albums and that was it. Or if we got a chance, excitingly go to the movies and see them on, on the screen. <clears throat> or maybe on a television show once in a great right. while. Yeah. So it was exciting to today for me to just turn on my phone and watch them do something or see Paul smile, you know, live. It's really cool. But mm -hmm. Never expected that, you know. All you had were album covers or inlets and yep. 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 And and the other thing was, you know, we had to wait a month to get a magazine with yeah. new pictures in it, you know. And 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 they were color pictures as well, you know, because television back then was black and white when the Beatles came out. And and uh, so we never really saw them in color except in the movies, the second movie. And also, you know, magazines and some parts of magazines, because most of the magazines were in black. The teenage magazines, like 16 Magazine, Teen Screen, they were black and white. The only thing was the inserts were color, where they had posters and stuff. But the magazines itself were black and white inside. So you didn't see very many color pictures. Uh, oh, thank you. That is actually the reason why I wrote the book. You know, I've been a journalist most of my life. Um, I was in advertising too and stuff, but I was a journalist. And I wrote an article in 74, as I mentioned, for the Philadelphia Bulletin. I was a young journalist in this big daily newspaper in Philly after college, right after college. And uh, I wrote an article. It was 10 years after Beatlemania uh, hit. And the, co the cover of my book, actually, wherever my book is, I can find it. Uh, the cover of my book is a picture that the newspaper photographer took in my recreation room at my parents' house with my memorabilia and, and me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was me when I was a young journalist wearing my old mini dress and a beetle hat and... Uh, some of my old posters. I have all that stuff, by the way. I kept everything. Kept so everything. Um, old posters and old albums, and I still have those too. But anyway, this that article that I wrote, and it was, was it? It was, uh, I have the article here. It was February 10th, 1974. And it was the Sunday Bulletin Magazine. I don't know if you can see it, but it was the Philadelphia Bulletin Magazine on a Sunday. And uh, and 
the newspaper would put this colored magazine out and it was called, uh, my story was called Dear John, Paul, George and Ringo. It was a very hard day's night, but let it be. So that was actually the idea for my book because I wrote about the Beatles 10 years after and being a fan in, in this magazine. And then it always was in the back of my head. Someday I want to write a book because I want to tell people what vintage fans did and how we did it and why we did it and what we did. And, and I wrote poetry for Paul and had it published and, and what, how we cried when one, how my girlfriends cried every time a Beatle got married and we had to be really, you know, by their side the whole day at school. And I mean, it's all in the book because this is the stuff that we did. It wasn't just going to concerts and sitting there and screaming. No, it, there was a lot of things we did those first, the first two years, I'd say, maybe three years, especially the first two years of how we, we were Beatle maniacs. What was a Beatle maniac, really? It wasn't just a fan. We went way beyond fandom. So that was the idea why I wanted to write this book. And I did. And, uh, you know, um, it took a little while and it took a while to find a, a bona fide publisher, too. But I did. And I was proud of that fact, too. That some my publisher, Holly, believed in what I was saying and how important it, it is to the future generations to know what we did and how we did it. Because we were such an important part of the whole puzzle. You know, we were the fans. Yes. And it's all, all, all we see, all you see, you know, the regular people, all you see is screaming maniacs. They don't see the, yeah. the in between. No. They don't see between the lines. Yeah. No. And, you know, I got a, I got a call from the, I guess my publisher did. I can't remember who the rock and roll hall of fame has an archives and they have a, um, a library. And at one point, a couple of years ago, they were looking for fan memoirs. So I think Pat's, book and my other friend Marty uh who wrote a book 16 and in, in uh 64 uh, and me our books are all in the rock and roll hall of fame now for the future uh about fandom beetle fandom um and of course the other important part is that I you I know you interviewed Pat uh Pat has written two books about her George Harrison fan club Marty Edwards has written a book about her she was the Chicago Land fan club. She was president of that. And then I was right, you know, I was co-president of Victor Spinetti. We banded together, the three of us, at Beatle Fest, and we became the three Beatle babes. <laughs> so we talk and lecture when we can, especially at the fests and some other places, uh, about what it was like to be fan club presidents mm -hmm. and first generation fans. So we tell people, you know, what it what it was really like. And it's a lot different than you think, you know. It, the same thing with a lot different being at the Beatle concerts in those days than, than it is going to a Paul McCartney concert today, you know. And we I am so excited for Fenway. Oh, you're going to Fenway. Oh, that will be cool. Oh I, my goodness. I get floor tickets. So I am so wow. excited. What the, what they what date is that? When is he going to be there? I think it's June 7th. Okay. So he's got a pretty long tour ahead in his way. Because yeah. mine's in 17th of May. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You all enjoyed. Is that the first time you've seen him? No. Yes. This is the first time. Okay. He's, he is so dynamic up on the stage. The man never sits down and he barely takes a drink of water. I know. <laughs> it's like, ah, all those hours, you know. So it's really worth it. And, of course, you know, he turns 80 this summer. So um, he's not a youngster. But, of course, Ringo will be 82 on July 7th. And Ringo has a tour going, too, this summer. Are you seeing Ringo? Ringo's nowhere in Texas, sadly, this time. I've seen him before. I've seen him a couple times in Texas, uh, but he's nowhere in Texas, not not anywhere. Um, so I'm not seeing Ringo this time. I wish, yeah. but 
I don't know. Is he is he on the east coast? I guess he is on the east coast and the west coast usually. Yeah, he doesn't go in the middle, which is weird. No, we we were lucky. We, I saw him uh, two or three times when he was here, uh, and he played smaller venues back then. He doesn't. He didn't play bigger venues, uh, but it was good. I, I enjoyed it a lot. You know, he's he's great, and he looks so good for his age. He is so dynamic. He look he, he looks younger every time I see a picture of him. Yeah, I think he's sucking the blood out of some somebody because he looks. He looks great, and uh, it's it was good seeing him too. And and uh, I never, I really never saw George Harrison in concert by himself mm -hmm. uh, or John uh, because I I really wasn't living in the states back then. You know, I was living in Europe, so I didn't get to see them. But I'm, I'm blessed anyway. and happy, you know, who I saw. It was good. But. Mm -hmm. If you were over here, you would have been at those concerts, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I had friends of mine who went to the concerts who would send me the uh, the programs and stuff in those days. So I still have a couple of the poem, of the Wings programs from many years ago, but because I wasn't here, I was, and they didn't actually play Finland and Sweden in those days. So I didn't get to see them, mm -hmm. which is sad. Yeah. So. But it's 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 a good world, the Beatle world. Yeah, you've lived a life of fame. Yeah, Patty, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, show. you're welcome. And can I just kind of tell you a little bit about my book before we go? Is that okay? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Okay. My book is called Diary of a Beatle Maniac, and it's a Fab Insider's look at the Beatles era. It's published by Sindrin Press from Malvern, PA. That's C-Y-N-R-E-N. -E and if you're interested, you could head to Amazon. You can go on my website and uh, and say hi to me and order a copy, and I'll send an autographed copy. My website is very simple. It's diary of a beetle maniac, one word, dot com. I do a blog every month. I try <laughs> and uh, talk about different things. And also, um, you can also order the book if you like through my publisher, which is Sinrin Press, C Y N R E N. Uh, I'll be at the Fest for Beetle Fans in, in, on April 1st uh, at the Hyatt Regency. And then I will also probably be at the Beetle Fest, the Fest for Beetle Fans in Chicago in August, uh, which is the next one that they, they have. Um, and uh, I'll see you there, whoever's going to be there. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll be on at one someday. Let's hope. Yeah. You, you might you might be at Beetle Fest in the future? Yes. Not this year. Right. Maybe someday. We gotta, okay. We got to convince Tim to go, too. Yeah. I oh, gotta, well, that would be cool. I got to yeah. cross the border. Yeah. There's not, not too much happenings in uh, Canada for... For Beatles fests, no, that's yeah. true. There, there's you know, there's one in Florida right now, Beatles on the Beach or something, and then there's there. I was at one in 2019 in Arkansas. Abbey, uh, the Abbey Road, Beatles on the at the Ridge. Ridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but the fest for Beatles fans is a really big one, and we're all looking forward to it this year. Believe me. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a good wait, as I should say. Yeah, it has. But, you know, hopefully we're on the better side of that. And, you know, we'll get back to the conventions now. So uh, we'll all meet there and, and uh, see our old friends, you know, uh, those who are left. <laughs> but we'll be seeing our old friends. So, but thank you so much today for, for everything. I, I so appreciate it. Uh, Hudson and and uh, you know enjoy your your concert coming up that that will be so enjoyable. You know, enjoy yours too. Thank you. Don't and thank you. Out. All the best okay. to you. <laughs> thank you. Take Thanks. care. Bye. Bye now. That went well. Yeah. That very good interview with 
it was real i thought it went really well patty stenman and you can find our website at solobeetlespodcast.com and you can send us comments at podcast at solobeetlespodcast.com